Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shira and you're watching Law of the Land on Raj Sabha TV. Today we bring to you the Indecent Representation of Women Prohibition Amendment Bill which seeks to include electronic medium within the ambit of the law. To discuss the issue, I have with me Madhvi Devan, Advocate, Dr. Charul Wali Khanna, Member National Commission for Women, Karnika Seth, Advocate and Cyber Law Expert. Now for the headlines. The bill includes electronic media and electronic publishing activity within the indecent representation of women prohibition law. It expands definition to specify depiction of women as a sexual object. And it empowers an inspector to conduct search and seize operation beside authorized officers of the state. The Indecent Representation of Women Prohibition Amendment Bill seeks to include information generated in electronic form within the ambit of the law prohibiting indecent representation of women. As of now, the existing law regulates primarily the print media in such matters. The government also proposes to enhance the penal provision to effectively deter indecent representation of women. Technological advancement has resulted in development of new forms of communication like internet, satellite-based communication, multimedia messaging and cable television. Most of these mediums are unregulated in matters relating to indecent representation of women. Now the government proposes to prohibit indecent representation of women by including electronic media and electronic publishing. The government seeks to amend the existing indecent representation of women prohibition law to widen the scope of the law. The ISP who are giving you the highway for accessing that content should not be held responsible for these content because these contents are coming either from the overseas server foreign or some server into the India which we can take into the task by blocking those content if it is available into the India. But if it is available into the foreign server, then it becomes a very challenge because these social media websites owner are not cooperating with the security agency in a way in which our security agency is demanding. The proposed law seeks to enhance the penalty in order to act as an effective deterrent. The bill seeks to increase the penalties from the existing maximum imprisonment of two years to three years. The bill also increases the minimum imprisonment for second offence from existing six months to two years and maximum imprisonment from existing five years to seven years. The bill proposes to increase the fine from the existing 2,000 rupees to a minimum fine of 50,000 rupees, which may be increased to 1 lakh rupees for the first offence and the minimum fine from the existing 10,000 rupees to 1 lakh rupees and maximum fine from existing 1 lakh rupees to 5 lakh rupees for the second offence. This is a very small act. It just pay, pays lip service to the, you know, the whole problem. There is no clear addressal of the problem and no uh, you know, definition as to how the things should be managed and uh, who should file the complaint. There is only one section about the seizure uh, of the you know, material which is supposed to be derogatory to women but um, for me you know it is just uh, something that the government wanted to do and it is being done it should have more teeth definitely the bill prohibits the publication or distribution of any material which contains indecent representation of women but the provisions do not apply to any material which may be published in the interest of science, literature, art or for bona fide religious purpose and for sculptures in the Asian monuments or temples. Beware all those who indulge in forwarding pornographic MMS or emails because this bill includes stricter penalties for them. With camera person Suresh, Arunat Thakur, Rajya Sabha TV. Is there a monitoring mechanism available to identify such violations? Ma'am, first of all, the basic issue, policing the virtual highway. Do you see it happening? And we've shown you pictures of advertisements which, you know, objectify women. The attempt is that. Do you think 
by expanding these definitions, by including electronic media into it. All this people, I mean, one will be able to manage to contain or stop by well, it certainly becomes much harder, I think, to contain the virtual world than the rest of it. But just coming back to the, the fundamentals of the problem, when this is an act which uh, seeks to prohibit indecent representation of women, I think we, we, we want to look at this in two ways. One is, look, we already have the IPC under which, say, obscenity is, is uh, outlawed. And now we, in, from 86, we've had this act which seeks to outlaw indecent. The word used is indecent, not obscene, number one. And two, there is a specific, this is a gender specific act mm -hmm. which deals with women, mm -hmm. okay? So obviously for some reason at that stage, the legislature thought that, that the IPC is not adequate. Right. Now what this bill of course does is to merely extend it to the virtual world and to all other uh, uh, forms of media that are available. But when we look at the definition of indecent representation of women, what I find fascinating is that it, it, it confines itself to the physical form of a woman, mm -hmm. the depiction of her bodily form, mm -hmm. as opposed to her social status. Mm -hmm. When we talk of indecency, indecency is a much wider term than obscenity. Obscenity is something which is you know, lewd, filthy, yeah. repulsive. Mm -hmm. Indecency is larger than that. Mm -hmm. And I haven't come across a single um, a legislative provision anywhere with the exception of the Cable Act, mm -hmm. where the, the status of women mm -hmm. uh, is, is sought to be, you know, uh, the social status of women, because particularly in the aftermath of, you know, the, the, the gruesome rape incident yeah. last yeah. month, and all these comments being made by uh, your political leaders, religious leaders about, you know, dented and painted women, whatever that <laughs> means, or, you know, your uh, uh, statement about how you should uh, uh, beg Dress your, uh, yeah, yes, etc. Conduct yourself. So, you know, what is there to prevent that? And I think that may be far more damaging to the status of women than the clips you've just shown. Yeah. Uh, you know, those kind of remarks, that kind of perception about women in society. And there's only one provision which I have come across in the Cable Act under the Advertising Code. Which, which, spells which it talks out. about, you know, that women shouldn't be shown in a submissive or a passive or a secondary role, okay? So I'm wondering whether, you know, since they have amended or they, they are, they're seeking to amend the definition of uh, uh, what amounts to indecent represent, what is there to outlaw hate speech against women of the kind that we've seen from our leaders uh, uh, in the, in, in the last week? Yeah. Ma'am, uh, uh, getting in, what was said, that it's basically lip service by including other mediums and bringing it into the ambit of this law. But the main problem, what Madhvi was talking about, is yet to be addressed. Do you see it the same way? I don't totally agree. Firstly, it's not lip service. This mm -hmm. is an amendment to the existing act. So the existing act is about indecent representation of women in which has been defined regarding the physical form. Mm -hmm. So this is an extension to that. This is not a new act. We're not talking about a new bill. We're talking about an amendment to an existing bill. Mm -hmm. And what the, it is an initiative of NCW because on two points. Number one, we were seeing the, you know, there were new forms of communication and technology with this whole technology boom, as you've shown in the film. So we thought that the scope of this act should include other forms of communication like table, uh, cable television, network, internet. So that was one, that was one. And that is what is being done, I think our expert will explain to you. And the second was that we felt that the penalty is absolutely paltry. Two years and 2,000 rupees. Till what that point, it's all fine, ma'am. But the moment you get into the definition aspect hmm. of indecency and what she was saying. Absolutely, physical form. Physical form hmm. and preventing or deterring yes. objectification of women. Absolutely. If that is the attempt, then don't well, you don't think know, the definition uh, should have been no, no. much more specific? Let us be very, very clear that the objective of this act at no point does it say it's about commodification of women or object. It's about, it's a ban, a prohibition on indecent representation of women, Absolutely. which is normally done through the physical form. So the definition, I mean, we have other acts. We have other acts, we have other, but this was a very specific act in 1986 because of, uh, because of the, you see, at, if you will see section 3 and 4, they are talking about advertisements and publication. Right. So pub, no person is, no person shall publish 
X, Y, Z advertisement or, uh, you know, cause it to be published or to be exhibited or pamphlets to be displayed. So the word publishing, when they're relating it to advertisements or any book, normally it's for the print media. I mean, mm -hmm. since 86, it meant, was meant to the print, print media. media yeah. So now with the expansion of the word publishing, publishing also includes broadcasting, cable network, etc. So mm. this is very specific act. It's not intending, nor does it claim to cover all forms of violence against women or all objects. No, no, I get it. I get it. I so get this it. This is specifically on her a manner of a figure of woman, her form or body thereof, which will deprave, corrupt, or, you know, which is again. But one more thing I want to ask. I mean, I want to tell you is that uh, I think one of your advocates had said something very specific that there is no section that who shall. Uh, who shall uh, make the complaint? And in our recommendations, in our, in, we had made an amendment to in uh, section four, and we had said that a sub clause A and B, in which it should be said that any member of the public or a, a, you know a well-meaning person, or, I mean that should be that definitely. Sh if it was defined, it should have been included. included. Ma'am, I'll bring yes. in uh, you policing the virtual highway, hmm. the line, and the point that was being made by the president of the association. You think that's a genuine issue or it can still be monitored and especially armed with the search and seizure power of an inspector? Yes, um, I feel that uh, the amendments which have been suggested in this uh, bill uh, will certainly give uh, more uh, effectiveness uh, to the enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, offences, what is an offence? First of all, it has uh, widened the ambit mm -hmm. of what, what is indecent representation of women. Mm -hmm. So far, it was not so clear that whether these uh, other forms of media will also be included because it was only curtailing it to print media. Right. Uh, now, it includes electronic media, it will include social media, it will also include other forms of broadcast like cable TV or or, uh, any kind of, uh, you know, even uh, uh, for that matter of fact, advertisements uh, through uh, through any medium, whether it's uh, radio or it's uh, even all, electronic. All so that is one thing which is a very uh, no, good thing. No, but the point made out by him was <coughs> what happens to the foreign servers? Yes. I mean, the foreign servers are full of such equipment and you've got a liberal society Internet outside. Internet certainly is a, is a vast, uh, you know, area where you can't possibly uh, curtail it to a physical territory. Mm -hmm. So we do understand that the medium is such that you cannot control uh, or regulate content which is coming from outside uh, only to the extent you will be able to do that so that you don't have public access within India. So blocking occurs. For instance, when there is a problem, like there is an ad which is indecent to women, and it's aired and you can actually access it within India, all you can do is block it. And blocking will occur only when there is a complaint. Mm. So the, there is so much of uh, influx of information on the internet and advertisements and other kinds of uh, you know, platforms. So it's very difficult for the intermediary the ISP to regulate it unless he learns of it. He has to have either actual knowledge of it uh -huh. or he has to be conspiring in it or if, if he is he's not aware, then at least when he's made aware, remove it. Which essentially mean, means it is doable. It is doable. It is doable. No doubt. We have a section in the IT mm -hmm. Act, which is section 79, whereby uh, if there is an actual notice given to the ISP, he is supposed to remove it within uh, 36 hours. That is according to the ISP guidelines, which is uh, uh, you know framed under so section 79. So in 36 79. hours, he gets uh, two crore strikes. It's fine. Well, the moment he gets a complaint, he has to start making initiatives to block it. Block it. Okay. Time for us to head into a break. When we come back, we will talk about the attempt of the government to prevent objectification of them. Welcome back. The proposed law seeks to expand the definition of indecent representation of women to include depiction of women as a sexual object and seeks to prevent objectification of women. It seeks to empower a police officer of the rank of an inspector to carry out search and seizure operations in addition to the existing provisions of the government's authorized officers. The proposed amendment seeks to empower police officer of inspector and above rank to conduct search and seizure. They will be given powers to enter any premises and conduct search and seizure of any material if there is reason to believe that the offence under the law has been committed. At present, only officers authorized by the state government can conduct search and seizure operations. 
According to the government, this additional change will ensure better enforcement of the proposed law. But if the act itself, you know, lays down guidelines or even the rules, if you see, are very slipshod. If the rules lay down guidelines as to what can be done, what need not be done, or mainly what need not be done. So, definitely uh, the, uh, the publishing houses, the audio visual area, you know, public, I mean, um, content makers, etc., will have, uh, will have to be restrained. The bill expands the definition of indecent representation of women to include depiction of women as a sexual object, which appeals to the prurient interest. The new definition seeks to make the intent of the portrayal more specific. The existing law defines indecent portrayal as a depiction of the figure, form, body or any part of a woman which denigrates women or is likely to injure public morality. According to the government, the change will be helping in addressing the problem of increased objectification of women. The bill also calls the National Crime Records Bureau data which registers a gradual increase in the number of violations of existing law. In 2009, the total numbers of violations were 845. It increased to 895 in 2010 and in 2011, 453 violations were recorded. एक औरत को ही आप प्लेटर पे रख के क्यों परोस रहे हैं, क्यों सर्व करना चाहते हैं उसको? और फिर एक बात और भी है कि डीओ का ऐड है, सपोज फॉर एग्जांपल मैं कहूँगी डीओ का ऐड है, अब आप उसमें बिकनी में औरत को दिखा रहे हैं, तो आखिर हम कहाँ ले जाना चाहते हैं? कंसर्निंग जो है कि अगर आपको शूज का ऐड है तो कम से कम औरत को दौड़ती हुई दिखाइए ट्रैक सूट में या वो तो बात समझ में आती है लेकिन शूज के ऐड में आप लड़की को बिकनी में दिखा रहे हैं तो ये सब मैं समझती हूँ कि बहुत गलत सम ऑफ द अदर लॉज विथ सप्लीमेंट्स इन डिसेंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ वुमेन इंक्लूड प्रेसेंट रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ बुक लॉ द इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजिकल लॉ द इंडियन पिनल कोड एंड केबल टेलीविजन नेटवर्क रेगुलेशन लॉ द इन डिसेंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ वुमेन प्रोहिबिशन लॉ वॉज इनटेड इन नाइनटीन एटी सिक्स टू प्रोहिबिट इन डिसेंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ वुमेन थ्रू एडवर्टीजमेंट्स और इन पब्लिकेशन राइटिंग्स पेंटिंग्स फिगर्स और एनी अदर मैनर However, the law in its present form relates primarily to the print media. The Indecent Representation of Women Prohibition Bill is the first updation to the Principal Act by including electronic media under its umbrella. With camera person Suresh Arunathakar, Rajya Sabha TV. Now suddenly you have, I mean, a huge number of police officers will be, who will be empowered if the bill is passed and approved by the parliament to go search and seize if a complaint rises. My first question to you, ma'am, is you've heard a lot of point of views in this. Yes. On the definition part, very specific, very clear. Sexual object, anything that depicts a woman as a sexual object. Yes, I, I completely uh, object to this definition. I, I mean, women is not, is not supposed to be even looked at as a, se a sexual object, leave alone the usage of the words in the uh, amendment. I, I, I don't think that it was appropriate to use uh, the word as yeah, a they're, sexual they're object. prohibiting such activity. That's true. Which is, which, which pre depicts a woman yes. as a sexual object or appeals to the prurient interest. True, true, true. You know, and very, very clear objectification of women. Hmm. So very specific categorizations. Yes. If the government is seeking to prohibit that, then what, I mean, do you think, do you see a problem here? Uh, well, I feel that women obviously cannot be treated like a sexual object. And if the government wants to prohibit that, that's a very good uh, uh, step I, indeed. However, uh, Maybe uh, you know words uh, could have been uh, better better uh, used uh, instead of saying women as a sexual object. Anything which uh, is denigrating, like uh, what what is already mentioned here, that anything which is denigrating or derogatory to the women as a status of women uh, and to her reputation, to her uh, mental or uh, other faculties also, I would say, not just physical form, uh, is something that uh, should have been covered by indecency, indecent representation in the physical form as well as anything to do with uh, uh, denigrating her status, her uh, reputation. 
I, I agree on uh, this issue. However, she, she is not to be treated like a sexual object. You mean the definition and the way it has been written is what you're objecting to? Yes. But the purpose is fine. Is purpose acceptable. is fine. Is acceptable. There are people in the world who who would or say you know treat women in this manner, and therefore it is uh, something has to be written to prohibit that the Doctor, activity. Uh, I understand the Walika, purpose is fine. You would like to uh, I the same of, issue. The I way it has been. I kind of agree with what she is saying because, you know, I feel that when you use a negative word, you kind of perpetuating that thought. So I'm also a little disturbed about this because, you know, we are talking about objectification of women and commodification of women. But to say it in an act, I mean, it's a little... You should say it should be indecent, but at the same time, they're saying such which is likely to deprave or arouse the prurient, uh, you know, air or interest of... So, which uh, that is actually what they want to say. Ma'am, if we, the law is not specific, no, no, how do you expect no, no, it, it to is. be more effective? The law is, in fact, it was kind of, you know, they said depraved, corrupt, injure public morality, and derogatory, indecent, denigatory. These were the words used prior to the uh, present uh, proposed amendment but uh, the, now they, it's become more general so that i'm sure in the rules they'll specify exactly what they mean because undoubtedly there is you see what uh, the intention i mean you must understand the intention behind yes. is the, there is unfortunately i mean whether we want to accept it or not sex sells so we cannot bring out everybody's prurient uh, interest. We can't bring out your base instincts. We can't arouse them all the time. Otherwise, we'll have more violence against The proposed against amendment does that? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It wants to stop that, quash that. But the word that it's used is um, definitely, I mean... It's derogatory I, itself, I will say. Okay. Ma'am, on the three points, the sexual object yeah. appeals to prurient interest, Yes. prevents objectification of women. The way it has been written, but the purpose is fine. Do you have anything to add to that? Well, I think the, 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 the intentions may be noble, but how do you prevent, you know, commodification? For example, I mean, you see so many ads with men in bare torsos. You see a Salman Khan with a bare torso all the time. Is that or not objectification of men? And I'm sure that there are women audiences who love to see that. So where do you draw the line? This is very, very difficult. Very difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, we have to... But does specificity help? Well, in, what I'm trying to say is that in, in the case of, laws of, better implementation of, of, of morality, law. laws on morality defy <laughs> definition. It will, you know, vary. Like Lady Chatterley's lover was out, uh, outlawed in India, but it passed uh, muster in, in the United Kingdom. Now, mm -hmm. today, if you test it, you know, 50 years later, maybe it will pass the muster. So it varies with time. It varies with, you know, and, and there are so many changes taking place in the world. So yes, ma'am. I just want to add to what mm -hmm. Madhvi is saying and definitely... Definitely, you know, there you can, uh, public morality and morals, you know, what is the concept is, especially in India, it's very region specific, culture specific, education specific. So that has been deleted. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing the legislatures, knowing that this is, uh, you know, public morality is a kind of a gray area and it's very, somebody, maybe the police inspector has some other morals or, you know, and somebody else doesn't. So that has been deleted. So now it's become more specific. The concept of public moral, morality and morals, injuring public morality and morals is, has been deleted. How do you that know? The you Supreme Court has already be offended uh, by also. somebody who's yeah, wearing the, a skirt. Hmm. Uh, you know, it may be a perfectly when, decent yes. knee-length skirt, but somebody from a village somewhere in the out, you know, uh, boondocks may feel that this is just uh, uh, most improper and, and you know, uh, immoral. That, if, that you, if, you, if, you, if you take too many parameters into uh, account, and if you really take the entire diversity into account, do you think it will be possible for one to be specific in providing a legal structure See, which think. runs across the length and breadth of India? I think My we question. have to I'll just go with you know, the let me, let me give you test. one concrete example of how, uh, uh, for example, uh, the law says that nudity is not always obscenity. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, let me give you this example of the film Bandit Queen, yeah. where, uh, uh, you know, the members of the Gujar community had mm -hmm. challenged uh, uh, the showing of this film on the ground that one of the scenes of frontal nudity of uh, Poolan Devi uh, was, was, you know, completely uh, a slur on, on, on Indian womanhood. 
And uh, uh, this, the scene was basically that, you know, she had been gang raped there for uh, days on end. And uh, uh, then she was paraded before the village n completely naked yeah, yeah, and asked yeah. to draw water. So it was a really uh, heart wrenching, a very, very disturbing scene, no doubt. And, uh, uh, you know, anyone with a little bit of sensitivity would have been very, very disturbed by this. And yet there were those in the cinema hall who hooted and clapped Absolutely, and cheered. Yeah. And, and, and at the same, now, now, are you going to censor something like that? Now, uh, you know, what the court said that eventually this is to, uh, you know, arouse your revulsion against what is being done. But mm. there are those who will enjoy yes. it and, and, you know, get, <laughs> feel titillated by something as tragic as that. So, I mean, can you cater to every segment? That's society. the question, ma'am. Is it possible it's, it's, to specify, very, codify, very, provide right. a legal that's structure? Why, no, that's why in the Ajay Goswami case, if you remember, the Supreme Court has very clearly said now we follow the Hicklin test, uh, you know, now the, now the Miller test, not the Hicklin test, which was earlier. So it's the objective standard which has to be viewed. How objectively one can view it? If you take it subjectively, everybody has a different view. You have to have an objective test. Time for us to head into a break. My colleague Aruna Thakur spoke to Indu Malhotra, senior advocate, and tried to get her point of view. First question I want to ask you that this bill seeks to include the electronic media. So do you think that uh, including electronic media gives more strength to the act? Well, uh, now this is an act of 1986 and a lot of uh, communication modes have developed with the advent of technology. There is multimedia, networking, cable, internet, etc. So for all these reasons, since there is so much communication by various other modes, it was considered imperative to bring about the electronic form also. And that is why this bill has been moved in November 2012 to bring in the electronic form also. This act is in addition to and not in derogation of other laws. So, even though the other laws are there, this is an additional remedy. This is an additional remedy for women. Obscenity is already there under section 292 of the Indian Penal Code, but there is an additional remedy and it is far more wide now. The bill also seeks to enhance the penalty. So, what will be your reaction on this? My view is that it is certainly an improvement on the original act of 1986. It makes it far wider. And so it is certainly a step forward. Do you have any suggestion for the existing bill? What my feeling is that the exception to it is with respect to public good. You know, you can justify a depiction if it is in public good on the basis of art, science, culture. So there are various exceptions which are very vague and widely worded and that is where, where exploitation can take place. That you know people can pass it off and say it is in public good. Now what is in public good? What is an expression of freedom of speech and expression under 191A? It is completely vague. That is the uh, problem with the amendment because the exception is too wide. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us on this discussion. It's time for us to end the show. You can email your suggestions and comments to law.rstv at gmail.com. You can also watch our shows on the YouTube. We'll be back with a new issue and a new episode. Keep watching Raj Sabha TV. <laughs>